one day we will be in some sunny weather and we'll be able to actually do some work on the boat on Ocean Melody on a sunny anchorage somewhere. But sadly today is not that day. <laughs> it's blowing and it's windy and it's horrible and it's rainy and I've got loads to do. So much has been achieved on Steel Melody over the past few weeks. We've had Andy and Jonathan here helping. Sharon's been to help. Melissa's been doing the upholstery as you know for Ocean Melody. But I've got a few things that I want to try and tick off on this horrible and miserable afternoon. We are Andy, Melissa, Jack and Oliver. We've spent the last few years preparing to head off sailing to every corner of the world. A few years ago we bought this huge steel yacht as a project. But when Ollie came along we needed a bigger boat with more cabins. So now we're working on both boats. Getting Ocean Melody ready to go. Getting Steel Melody ready to launch so that we can sell her. To put some much needed funds back in the kitty for when we set sail. I've been working on the chain locker as you've seen. The four peak is re pretty reasonable, you know, it's respectable. The heads I've got to work on, the hanging lockers are fine. The saloon is dismantled at the minute because we're still working on this flipping keel box. I just wish we'd done it properly in the first place. That's a different story. Anyway, we're fixing problems on the keel box still. However, uh, one thing that's been bugging me for a long time is this aft end. Now, it had two huge cockpit lockers because the previous owners uh, were just a couple and they didn't need to have any aft cabins or quarter berths or anything like that. But the original design did. On the original design work, there, were, uh, there was an aft cabin on this side and a cockpit locker on that side, which is what we've now got. In order to modify that, when I was sort of sorting the boat out for me and Jack and Melissa, before Ollie came along, I took out all of this bulkhead, which I had to do anyway to do the metal work, and thought, well, if, now that I've taken that out, I may as well make a cabin at the back end, which I've done. But what I've now got to tackle is this kind of whole area. I'm gonna start taking out some of the angle iron uh, that's under these steps, because some of it's a little bit suspect, some of it's okay, uh, and I'm gonna rebuild some of that structure. As anybody who works on project works will tell you, it's a constant battle between having to move stuff from one place to another to work on the bit that you need to work on. Now, I can't put stuff in the forepeak because that's full of trim and uh, mahogany bits and pieces for trimming the boat out. I can't put stuff in the saloon because as far as I'm aware, Andy's coming back tomorrow to continue work on the keel box. So I've had to put everything in here in the pilot house and I've stacked up this aft uh, berth with all of the pipe work that was under here. because that's all the pipe work that I need for my bilge pump. So I've just cleared this out. It's very dirty and very grubby in here. But what I want to achieve at this end is just tidying the whole thing up, sorting out exactly where the floor is going to go, where the steps are going to go, uh, and seeing if I can make some sense of the back end. I don't know how far I'm going to get with it. Let's find out. Right, now I can see the wood for the trees. I've just got a big open space and all I've got to do, <laughs> all I've got to do is uh, construct something to hold up the floor and steps. Simples. My plan was to weld some angles here, it's a bit long, but from there down to there, which should support the companionway, um, and then some angle across here, because all the, the old stuff, I mean, bit, there's gonna be wood, but the old stuff was all made out of timber with a few sort of shonky bits of angle iron. I'm gonna make something a bit more substantial. I thought I'd got more angle here and I don't. I've got more back at the workshop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple of other jobs here and then I'm gonna head back and fetch more angle from the workshop. That's really, really irritating because I thought I'd kind of got this nailed and was gonna be able to crack on with this. It's always the way though. Um, so. The problem now is, again, I'm whinging about boat work and spaces. I've now emptied everything out of here and I've buried the rest of the boat. So what do I do now? Do I put everything back in here so I can go and do another job? Or do I cut the day short and go home and fetch the angle? Which is, there's no point in me coming back here today if I do that. Oh, 
I'm so annoyed with myself for not bringing it with me today, but you, you don't know what you're going to need until you need it, do you? I've made a bit of space down here to do something. It's not turning out to be a good day, this. Um, at the aft end of the keel box, uh, there is a flange. Something is wrong with the left flange. The flange is really, really inaccessible. When uh, Nigel plated the inside of the keel box, it was pretty tricky to get a weld up along the underside of that flange, so that never happened properly. We've tried to put a weld in there, but it, it turns out that the, the underside of that flange itself is a little bit kind of suspect anyway. Let me show you. So this here is the flange I'm talking about. It's all a bit dirty, it's not rusty, but there's a bit of surface rust on the underneath of it. This is brand spanking new steel for the keel box. And that there is also brand spanking new steel for the keel box. But getting a weld there is proving really, really tricky because you're welding blind, you can't see what you're doing. And because this flange is also a little bit on the suspect side anyway, I'm going to try and cut that out completely remove it so that we can get a weld along the top of that piece of plate and then replace the flange itself. Righty ho peeps, come and look at this. Now that there is the end of the keel box. And there's a flange that goes across here that this pipe bolts to. This pipe is for the, um, the cable for the, uh, to lift the keel up and down. And as you can see, the new plate has been welded beautifully along here and beautifully along here, all the way along. And sort of okay here, but the weld just hadn't, getting the weld up into these corners, extremely difficult. So really, that flange should have been cut out in the first place when, that, when this back plate was cut in. So this is a really simple fix. Uh, we can now run a proper bead of weld in here, and we can put an extra bit of beef basically bring this plate up to here by welding a new plate in here uh, above onto the bulkhead and then put a new flange in. Simple. It's actually a really, really simple repair now and it means that it'll be done proper, proper, proper. I've been and fetched some more angle iron so now I can carry on making the support frameworks for the companion waist steps.
don't know if you remember, but ages and ages and ages ago, when we first started working on Steel, Mem Me Blah. Steel Melody, um, a gentleman approached us, Tom, his name was, and we dubbed, dubbed him Tom the Legend. And he gave us an entire bag of power tools, these XL power tools. They're relatively cheap, but they're just so grateful. And all I can say is, we weren't sponsored by them, we were given them by a follower, okay, fine. And they have lasted three years and we have battered them. And okay, they're now starting to come to the end of their useful life. They're starting to give up, the drill, the drill particularly. But they've been so helpful and we can't thank Tom enough. On a similar note, um, the drill has given up and the drills that I personally use at the minute, just because I've had them, uh, these Stanley Fat Mac ones, Fat Max ones, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, you'll probably remember I uh, fried the charger for our Stanley Fat Max, and uh, uh, Clive, one of our patrons, popped by and he's taken my old charger away to have a go at repairing it. But in the meantime, somebody else, Steve, sent us a brand spanking new Stanley Fat Max charger, which is super super handy and super super generous so thank you very much clive for taking our broken one away to fix and thank you very much steve for uh, buying us the new one because now it means you can charge two batteries at once so um uh, what i'm doing at the moment i've got my steel frameworks in uh this is <laughs> 60 by 60 by 6 mil angle this is ridiculously strong it's welded down to the ribs of the boat um, there is just no way on earth this is ever going to break it'd probably take about a million years to rust through even if you didn't paint it which i'm going to of course what i'm doing for now i'm going to be putting a, a plywood floor down and some steps and what have you down into this aft end uh, i haven't bought, bought the plywood yet but i still need to be able to get up and down these steps so i'm just going to put the old cut the old fly, plywood um, and the joists because obviously the, the layout's slightly different now so i've got cutting the old joists and the old plywood back in to go in here temporarily uh, um, because i don't want to put brand spanking new plywood down and then wreck it with muddy boots and work boots as we're doing the work over the next week or so so for now these are going back in and they're, they're to be honest these joists are absolutely fine anyway they're not remotely rotten anyway thank you very much to uh steve for the new battery charger thank you to tom uh not seen you for ages hope you're all right mate uh for the xl tools they were really handy i'm gonna get the floor down now I've screwed some timber to um, this backing board. Again, like I say, I know I'm sort of doing a temporary, temporary, temporary fix, but I don't want to put nice plywood here and then me, you know, wreck it before I've finished everything else. But I do need this companion way to be solid and reliable and not collapse on me when I'm carrying bottles of gas and stuff like that. Before, it was really needing repairing. Now it's repaired, the metalwork. What I've got to do is finish it up, epoxy it, and put some nice plywood on. But in terms of the design, um, I'm sort of sort of formulating in my head how things are going to lay out and I'm using some scrap old plywood to do that. The other thing I've done is I've welded a piece of stainless flat bar across the companionway um, steps here as you can see. I've used a dissimilar metal rod to weld on the stainless um, little step there in front of the companionway doors. They are select arc dissimilar metal so they're designed specifically for mixed metals and um, stainless to mild because of course the boat's made of mild steel, but I want the step to be stainless because it's going to be a high wear area. So even if I paint it, people's shoes are going to scuff the paint off and I don't want that rusting. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to look at the old steps and the new steps. These are the old temporary steps that we're using while we're working on the boat. And I just, as I say, ages ago, I knocked these up out of some birch ply and just glued them together. And they are perfect for clambering in and out of the boat, just like these backboards are perfect when we've got mucky, horrible boots on. And these are the beautiful new teak and brass steps that I'm going to be putting in the boat in, you know, in the end. 
what I want to do is I want to find a way to mount them. Now, they're not actually companion way steps, these. They're actually a bathing ladder, like a swimming ladder. Um, and they've got lovely brass attachments here to go into, I presume, in the original boat. There would have been some deck fittings for these to go into. I'm actually going to make some uh, holes in this backboard to accommodate those brass fittings so that the steps can't move around when people stand on them. And I might make some sort of nice mahogany trim to go around that. Nice, huh? I'm going to just flesh that out again. I'm just sort of mocking it up in this cheap, cheap plywood before I build it in nice stuff. So now, I can't do it with one hand, unless I can. These two prongy bits on the ladder go into the two little holes, which I'll, you know, I'll trim them nicely. I'll, I'll, I'll do some nice wooden trim around them and I'll make this in, in some nicer timber. But the principle is there, that that ladder now will be our final ladder. And uh, this will be, so you're gonna see this one back in a minute, because that's our temporary work ladder. Uh, but at least I've sort of got an idea in my head of how this is going to go. Really pleased with that. Andy's back, um, as promised, Andy's back helping with the welding on the keel box. So the two things that we're trying to tackle are the end plate, as I said, where they've got that issue against the bulkhead and we've still got some more work to do around the keel pin. I'll just show you what we've been doing, well, what Andy's been doing. Further to my work on the keel box the day before yesterday, Andy's cleaned this up a bit more. You can see where the weld has blown through that bulkhead. So that would have been a really big problem. But we're gonna put a plate in here um, and then we're gonna put the flange back in on top. So it's gonna be a, a really, really solid repair because all this steel is really solid. So we're gonna prep the plate and we're gonna use the MIG welder to put that in so that we can get a really good solid weld on there. The first thing to do then is to make that cardboard template in steel. Yeah, Lovely. just need a tiny bit to take off this corner, I think. Okay. Right, I'm slightly nervous. We're about to try to install the keel, uh, which has been out of the boat for ages. The keel box work is all done. Um, we've been working for ages on the keel pin uh, and welding around it and grinding and welding around it and grinding. And the other thing that we've had to do is modify, slightly modify the wings on the uh, either side of the keel cap. Uh, because the new keel box is slightly narrower, only eight millimeters, because we used four mil steel to build the new one. Um, we've obviously had to take a few millimetres off this uh, cap, uh, off these wings either side. So we're just going to replicate that on the keel. Then we're going to move the keel into position and see if we can crank it up underneath the boat.
you're probably looking at the keel thinking, hold on, there's a load of work still to do there, and you're right. There's a couple of places where the paint has got scratched with the keel lying on the floor, so there's a little bit of grinding back and repainting to do. But honestly, with the weather like it's been and having Andy here to help, my feeling at the time was that I can address those areas with the keel in the boat, and that it was a priority to make use of the fact that I had Andy here to help me, and it was a dry, still day to attempt this, which is a rare combination. But you'd be dead right to say that by rights, that work should be done before we reinstall the keel, and if you keep watching, you'll see what happens. Just gonna get a plaster for that. deal as when we took the keel out we've got the block and tackle with a strop through the um come through the hatches in the saloon ceiling and i'm gonna take up on the block and tackle and see what happens right just be like super alert and out of the way in case anything suddenly gives on this yeah. okay going up a touch okay That's the keel, is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Right. Which one do you want me to go up on? Uh, on the bow. Oh, on the bow. Right, okay. You've got about another three inches to get the bottom of the keel box now. Any chance of it pivoting? Possibly. Hold it there. Yeah, but we can do that once we get the... Um, whoa! Hang on, let me stand back if you're doing that. So it's got to come up actually where it is now. Okay. And then forward once we're above the keel pin. Right. If you come down and give us a hand. Yeah. I'll lift it, or I'll pivot it up and we can slide all the bars out of it. These can come out. No, I need to get it from the other side, I think. That can come out. I think we're going to need a bit more. A bit more height yeah you think okay i'm going to take up on the tail end do you want me to go down yeah go down a little bit okay now Well, as you've seen, we've just been trying to reinstall the keel in Steel Melody, the swing keel, which is now lying under the boat. The keel is now in the correct position, attached at the front end and attached at the aft end. We've got it on a black and tackle at the front end, 
with the straps through the hatches as you've seen and at the aft end we've got it on the normal winch that lifts up the stern end of the keel. We failed to get it in and the reason is we thought we were going to be able to bring the keel in from the side, get it on a 45 degree angle and then slither up into that keel box. But we can't and the reason is the keel's got to go right up on its edge and the keel is 20 inches 20 inches wide in a sense so 20 inches deep when it's on its side it's got to go right up on its nose on its edge um, for its entire length then it's got to slide forwards then the front end has got to lift up lift up onto the keel pin and then the back end can lift up. You can't come in from the side and up because the keel pin is in the way and the two blocks that the keel sits on in the down position are in the way. A bit disappointing, does mean that we've got no choice but to pay for a lift. The, the, uh, jacking this boat up with uh, is kind of doable, but you'd have to jack it up 20 inches off the ground, which is an awfully long way. Uh, and I, we just don't feel like it's safe practice to go uh, any higher than she already is. So uh, we're just going to have to wait and get the boat lifted, uh, you know, in the strops to put the keel in. Bit of a shame, but hey ho, you know, better safe than sorry, eh guys? But the silver lining to that, of course, is what it means is we've now got time to anti-foul the inside of the keel box and the keel itself. I was thinking if we put the keel in today, great, you know, done, ticked, but it would make anti-fouling the keel in the keel box uh, a little bit more problematic. Still doable, but more of a pain in the bum. Um, it would have been nice to get the keel in because it means I've then got more time to seal the keel box and put the nuts and bolts in the top. So six, one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, serendipity. Um, we haven't managed to get the keel in, but it does mean that I'll be able to get the keel anti-fouled and the keel box anti-fouled and then we'll lift it in the straps and do it in a much safer fashion. Whew. I'm getting tired. The last thing that I'm going to do today then is weld this here plate into the keel box against the bulkhead uh, where it had blown through. Um, when the keel box plating was originally put in. So I'll get that welded in. Uh, then I can start looking at welding in the flange. All of that could have been done with the keel back in its box, but it's easier to do it without. Uh, and then we might call it a day. I'm exhausted. Okay. Yeah, gas is on, lovely. Well, it's been a very funny sort of week. I'm trying to get Steel Melody ready to sell, as you know, and I've got somebody coming to view her tomorrow. So of course, it's important to me that I show her off in her best light. I want her to look as clean and tidy as possible, but it's also important to me that I'm honest about how much work there is left to do and that she's presented in a way that isn't sort of deceptive. Although with the number of YouTube videos we've put up, <laughs> all the stuff that we've done to her, it's pretty difficult to be deceptive about anything we've done on this boat. Nevertheless, as the date goes closer, when we get rid of Steel Melody and uh, pass her on to her new owner, I am becoming more sort of anxious about comebacks. Obviously, I want to sell the boat. She's not going to be turnkey, showroom, perfect, finished condition, but I don't want whoever buys her to be um, sort of feel like they've been swindled or duped or led down, a, a, you know, a path. Um, so in an effort to get Steel Melody sort of looking a bit more ship shape and uh, presentable, uh, young Tim came to help me for a few days. We didn't film anything with Tim, but uh, we had a really good time hanging out. We weren't doing anything sort of worth filming. We were just tidying and doing little bits of painting here and there. So it wasn't like I could set the camera up for a really nice pretty time lapse. But let's pop outside and have a look at what we've achieved so far. And I've got to try and do the last little bits of tidying today to try and get the boat ready sort of to be looked at tomorrow. 
So one of the things that we've done is uh, we've painted out the whole of the cockpit now. Uh, the seats, the cockpit combings and the steps up onto the pilot house. And I've also put some grey non-slip paint on the cockpit combings as well. Let's go and have a look forward and see what we've done up the front of the boat. The sides of the pilot house have now been painted. Uh, we've done the grey non-slip at the aft end of the uh, coach roof. Needs a bit of tidying up. There's a few little splashes there that because we're painting in strong wind. And we've done the grey non-slip on the foredeck as well. Now, as you can see, we're having to sort of paint between rain showers. The paint that we did yesterday is already sopping wet. Um, and I'm sort of walking around leaving muddy footprints on the beautiful white new paint. Uh, but what I want to try to do is get some of the paint splatters off the windows. When you're trying to paint in 30 knots of wind, because it's the only time you've got to do it, it's nearly impossible to stop the odd little bit blowing off the brush. So I want to try and give the windows a clean. Uh, I'd also try and like to do some more of the grey non-slip in the cockpit on the seats and on the combings. Uh, and I've got some woodwork that I want to do in here. Well, that's the front screens of the pilot house done, uh, the front windows. Um, it is so cold out there and so windy. I can't stay out there for too long at a time. It's probably better to leave this till a, a warmer day, but I just want to try and get as much done as I can before these people look at the boat. Um, but my hands are just like blocks of ice. I was wearing my welding gauntlets to do that. I'm just doing bits of trim and what have you around the, the ceiling panels. As I've said before on a boat, the, the walls are, are, are the ceilings in a boat. So th in a house, these are the walls and these are the ceilings, but on a boat, these are the ceilings and this is the deck head. However, I went in the forepeak to look for some timber and look what I found. I found these. Now, I don't know how many of you remember these, but these are our boards of doing, done, and all of that business. And we'd already done a lot, but I'm gonna go through these boards now and, um, and put stuff in the done pile. So that we still have them. This is the done list. This is interior, okay? And anything in red is considered to be critical. So, let me just start with this, uh, this actual board here. Grind welds around instruments, done. Paint the cockpit and side decks, done. Paint underside and inside the keel box, done. Terracou or blast the whole cockpit, done. Refitting the steering wrap in the steering and wrap in bubble. Uh, well, we've not wrapped it in bubble wrap, but yeah, the steering's all refitted. Grind the welds on the cockpit combings. Done. Weld inside the keel box. Done. Insulate and spray foam. We used the XPS pink board that was given to us by one of our followers, so that's done. Fit and weld the and paint the new bowsprit. Done. Uh, repair the chain plates, done. Fabricate the cutlass bearing, done. Clean and paint inside the engine bay. I haven't actually done that. I haven't painted, I haven't done a new coat of paint in the engine bay, but that's not that critical to launch. Welding the four chain plates, well, done. I don't know why I've got, oh, I suppose that's make the chain plates and then weld them in. Uh, assess rust to the stringers and repair, done. We had the whole back end replaced. Trace the water system, done. 
Insulate the boat. Yeah, done. Oh, these are in different areas of the boat. Teak veneer of the bulkhead in the forepeak. Done. So all of that lot is done. Now the next board, this one, uh, this is the inside. So the board says inside the boat. And what we did, we moved all the non-essential stuff down. But we'll, So I'll move the essential stuff across that we've done. Inside the chain locker. Sand, grind and prep the steel inside the chain locker. Done. Uh, paint with epoxy. Done. Nearly killed myself last week doing that. Line with rubber or similar. No, I've not put a rubber liner in the chain locker yet. Might do that. Paint below the waterline with epoxy. Done. Melissa did that. Right then, so let's just have a little recap. That now is the done board. It's so done that stuff's falling off of it. This is the inside board. And the only things left to do inside the boat now are line the chain locker with some rubber. I'm actually going to use a plywood base for the chain to sit on, so that will be slightly different. Refit the seacocks uh, and the toilet, and you know, make a toilet platform. That's important stuff. And then there's a couple of other less important stuff. The, the red stuff is kind of important, the amber stuff less so. Um, things like uh, put panelling out the, the walls and what have you, but not critical for launch, is it? Um, Grey water sump pump. Again, it's not critical for launch. Uh, in the pilot house, um, check the instrument panel wiring just to make sure that all the instruments work and fit a VHF. So that's important stuff in the fit the bilge pumps that's important i want to do the um steel frameworks in the aft cab the the garage the the lazarette at the back uh and fit the skin fittings and the bilge pump fittings to the transom um that's actually already done don't know how that got missed um and then the other things in green are like put some paneling on the walls in the garage it's just not critical is it uh, the heat, water and heat, service the water pumps. Uh, in fact, those are done. Water filters, they're done, they're done. Paul Dark did that, he got all the water system working. Uh, the prop shaft, got to do the gland packing uh, on the prop shaft and the, um, tighten up the, the gland packing on the rudder shaft. And again, bilge pumps. So, there are bilge pumps in the boat, I've just got to make sure they all work. In And then on the outside, uh, fit the pilot house winches and clutches. I've got to do that. I've done the ones in the cockpit, but not the ones on the top of the pilot house. Um, I've got to fit the throttle and gear selector into the cockpit. And then here on the swim platform, I've got to put a new platform hatch in, uh, install, in put a stern light on. There's a solar panel on the roof of the pilot house already, so I've kind of done that, but I'm not putting the ones on the solar arch. Got the new instruments, already got them. They just need fitting, so that won't be a problem. Um, step the mast, well, that's gonna be one of the last things we do anyway. I've reinstalled the lifting keel, obviously still haven't done that. Anti-foul and anodes, and, and, and that's it, guys. That, that, is everything that we have achieved on this boat. That is all the stuff that we haven't achieved on the outside. And this is all the stuff that we haven't achieved on the inside. And to be dead honest, I'm actually quite pleased with that. Um, it's a heck of a lot of work that we've done over the years, isn't it? Okay, so uh, Tim and I spent the last uh, about three days tidying up the whole of the boat, um, ready to get viewed uh, by somebody who wanted to come and have a look over the potential to buy, which is really exciting. So we tidied up the whole of the forepeak, that's all fine apart from a pile of uh, trim and timber on one side. Uh, got the saloon all re-put back together, so we put down the, re reassembled the whole of the keel box with the plates on the top, uh, put all the sole boards back down, the water tanks back together, 
um, all the seats and the upholstery back together, put the deck head lining back up and the master compression post in situ and put the panelling back on the walls, on the, the ceilings as it is. Uh, we've tidied up the pilot house so that's all fine and I've taken home any tools and stuff that was on the boat that was, uh, wouldn't have been helpful for showing somebody around the boat. And as you've seen, we've done a bit of paintwork outside. So that was really great. Unfortunately then, when it came to Friday, the person who was going to come and visit, who we'd been preparing for, had to cancel. Uh, so that was a bit like, oh, I could have spent those three days doing boat work instead of tidying up. But it doesn't really matter because what it means is the boat is now in a kind of a, a tidier state than she was before. Uh, the downside to that is I've now got to take it all apart again to carry on with the keel box. So I've still got that flange to work on. First thing to do then is move all of these soft furnishings and uh, move the upholstery if I can and start taking the seats apart, the floor back up and the keel box apart again so I can get the flange to carry on working on it. That was nice, that was a phone call from Cliff, our patron, who's got my uh, Stanley battery charger. He reckons he's been able to fix it. Fortunate at the minute we've still got the one that, um, well, we've got the one that Stephen bought for us. Uh, but Cliff uh, thinks he's fixed our battery charger. He's going to bring it up next time he comes. So, uh, yeah, little pause in the proceedings there to have a chat with Cliff. Uh, back to work now. Now, the keel box is sealed along the top by these three huge plates of steel with lots and lots of nuts and bolts held down uh, to seal it down. This one is the aft one. These bolts hold down the, uh, the steel tube that the cable runs down for the winch. I've got a new one here, so I've got to weld in these new bolts. And along the back, because we've now put that plate against the bulkhead, this back section is now fractionally uh, wrong. It doesn't, it's fractionally too long. So I've got to nip a little slice off the back of there. So I'm gonna to have to nip a little tiny piece off that uh, just to make sure that, that that fits absolutely perfectly. So that's gonna be my first order of operations is to uh, grind these welds so that, and take a tiny sliver off the back end of this plate. Right, now this plate should, I should be able to get, if I've done this right, I should be able to get a bolt in there, yes. One in here. These actually go in, when I do the final fit, these go in from the underneath. And it, just to make sure it lines up at this end as well. Yeah, look at that. So that's, that's how this plate bolts down. But underneath that is where the flange of uh, trouble was. So I'm now, I can now use this as a template to cut the flange for the back. We have a flange. Look people, a flange. So these two bolts come up from the underneath and they're gonna be welded on. Uh, they don't actually have to be sealed because there's loads of Sikaflex at the top, but I will weld them all the way around. And then that flange has got to weld in, uh, which is gonna happen right now.
There you go, new flange in place. I've ground the welds flat because of course the keel lid has to sit on this bit here and this bit here. So they've got to be ground completely flat. And the next thing is uh, mix some paint and get some paint on that bare steel. So this area will go from looking like this to looking like this. And yes, of course, I'm gonna be cleaning up the metalwork the whole way along the keel box and um, giving that all a fresh coat of paint as well. Well, there you go, it's the end of another episode. Uh, a lot has gone on. We've completely failed to fit the keel back in the boat, but that's the way it goes. We're just gonna need to get the boat lifted to do that. But we have managed to repair the back end of the keel box. We've managed to do all the welding around the keel pin. So everything's ready to go. I've got a bit more work to do on the keel itself. A few of you probably noticed there's a little bit of rust staining still on the keel, which by rights, I should clean that up and sort it before I put the keel back in. Although it would have been possible to do that with that in the boat in case you were thinking, oh, what's he doing putting that keel back in the boat like that? I could have, I could have um, sorted that with the keel in the boat. Anyway, thanks very much for watching as always. Thanks very, very much to Andy and Tim and everybody else that's helped uh, on this episode. Coming up next week, uh, I'm back working on the solar, um, uh, solar arch and the cockpit enclosure for Ocean Melody. I've got a friend coming to help me sort that out. And we're also gonna be hopefully having a look at the diesel tanks in Ocean Melody as well. And no doubt I'll be doing some more work on Steel Melody as well. Thanks to our patrons, of course, for supporting us every week. Thanks to you guys for watching and liking and commenting and, and all the lovely, lovely supportive comments you leave us. It really does mean the world to us. Keep them coming. Uh, so for now, I'll say bye-bye and I'll see you next week. Bye.